and welcome to Crosstalk, where all things are considered. I'm Peter LaBelle. Dissent is being criminalized. Speech is being arrested. Just ask Max Blumenthal, editor of the Gray Zone Project and a leading investigative journalist. Increasingly questioning mainstream media narratives and interrogating policymakers can get you banned, demonetized, and even arrested. Talking speech freedom. I'm joined by my guest Ray McGovern in Raleigh. He is a former CIA analyst and co founder of Veteran Intelligence Professionals for Sanity. In Washington, we have Garland Nixon. He is the co host of the Sputnik radio show Fault Lines with Nixon and Stranahan. And in Pittsburgh, we cross through Dan Kobalik. He is an adjunct professor of law at the University of Pittsburgh, as well as author of The Plot to Overthrow Venezuela, How the U.S. is Orchestrating a Coup for Oil. All right, gentlemen, crosstalk rules in effect. That means you can jump in anytime you want, and I always appreciate it. Ray, let me go to you first. I mean, I think we all know the details of Mac, Max Blumenthal's arrest and the charges, or bogus charges, that he would say. Um, and he's uh, contacted this program. We invited him to come on, but he was given legal advice that he probably shouldn't. So he wanted to be here, but because there's ongoing litigation, uh, his uh, lawyers told him to hold back. Uh, Ray, it seems to me on its face, uh, this is a criminalization of dissent. Um, Max Blumenthal is a prolific journalist, a very good one. He knows his stuff. He's had some great work on Venezuela, on Syria, on Russiagate, and so many other topics. It looks like they're coming for Max. Go ahead, Ray. Well, first, a very small uh, correction, Peter. You say we all know about Max. None of my fellow Americans know about Max. Well, you, you got ahead of the me there. I wanted to go there, too. The go media. ahead. Go ahead. You're right. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let, let me back off here and just say, well, you know, there's an expression, the pen is mightier than the sword. Now, uh, the U.S. government and the mainstream media have collected all the pens that they can. But they couldn't get Max Blumenthal's or Aaron Matei's pens. Now, this is a terrific encouragement to old guys like me because the younger generation, half my age, are coming, coming into their own. They will not be stifled. They will not be discouraged. So what do they pay? Well, they pay the price of being arrested and held. In, I've been in those jails, D.C. jails, overnight, two nights. Now, what's this all about? Well, it's intimidation, pure and simple. Uh, what people don't know is that on the 15th of October, John Kiriakou was given the same treatment, yep. okay? Squads of police cars, a bunch of people shackled and all that stuff. So what they're trying to do is, I guess, every 10 days, pick out a real, real offender in their, in their view. If somebody tells the truth and blows the whistle on CIA crimes, whether they be torture or overthrowing the government of Venezuela, uh, to teach us all a lesson that you can't do that, that's beyond the pale. Well, they, they won't quit. The question is whether we'll get enough support from people who are kept now in the dark about what's happened to Max. Yeah, well, that's exactly why I'm doing this program, because I am not going to be silent. This is an egregious offense against freedom of speech, the First Amendment, and a, and a, a truly profoundly good journalist here. Garland, weigh in on this here. Where are the journalists, okay? I'm glad Ray got ahead of me, but he's absolutely right. Where is the outcry here? Because you really have to search for it. Go ahead. Well, well, the journalists are getting locked up. The journalists are in Belmar, Belmarsh Prison. The stenographers for the deep state are running around masking as journalists, masquerading as journalists. So, you know, the reality is they're not really worried or concerned about it. You know, you know a lot of people will talk about, you know, Assange or Max Blumenthal and say, why aren't the other journalists standing up for them? Because eventually they're next. Well, the reality is what we have now that's passing as journalism isn't next. You're not going to be next if you are spouting. You know, if you're espousing the premises that the deep state wants you to espouse, you're not going to be next. So they're very, very safe. Um, I want to add this. You know, a lot of people don't know this. In my previous career, I was in law enforcement. When I was retired, when I retired, I was a major. I was a commander of the investigations divisions. Uh, so I would handle particularly these types of incidents. And I think one thing that's important to look at here is we've got a minor incident, an alleged minor incident. Alleged. If it were me, when I was a commander of the investigations division, I would have simply said to the person, "You need." 
to go down to the court, fill out an application for a statement of charges, and Mr. Blumenthal will be served with a summons and you can go to court. There was no need to take the aggressive action that they did and send basically a team of officers for an unarmed person with no history of violence. So I think that's the key to understanding it, seeing that the, the overwhelming force that they're using against journalists with no history of violence or doing really anything that would, that would make them a, a liability or a danger to police officers responding. Yeah, Dan, I mean, the, from what uh, the accounts that I've heard, and, and this is from Ben Norton, uh, uh, also at, at the Gray Zone, is that um, a SWAT or SWAT-like um, uh, uh, officers uh, came to Max's uh, residence at 9 o'clock in the morning. Well, why do you need that kind of firepower? I mean, uh, Max Blumenthal is on the record of saying, if you had just summoned me, I would have shown up. Why do they need to use these kind of tactics here? Is it just pure intimidation? Go ahead, Dan. Yeah, yes, it's pure intimidation. There was no uh, need to do it as a police matter. Again, this is a five-month-old misdemeanor warrant that they acted upon. And as you said, they uh, surrounded his home. They threatened to knock down his door if he didn't come out. He was arrested. He was shackled. He was held incommunicado for 36 hours, not even able to call his own lawyer. There was no reason for such a, uh, a, a very uh, minor charge to treat him in this way. This was clearly a politically motivated stunt to intimidate Max, to intimidate other journalists like Max. And it's shameful. And the other thing that's shameful, uh, as we've touched upon, is that this is getting virtually no coverage yeah. in the press. Uh, you know, this recalls to mind a statement by John Pilger, a journalist in Great Britain. He said, what passes for journalism today is anti-journalism. And I totally agree with him. You know, Ray, I mean, the message is being sent here. You have to toe the line here. And I, I really want uh, viewers of this program to take a look at some of the uh, work that uh, the Gray Zone has done. It's extremely good, extremely professional, um, and it, it, it pushes back against narratives that were just fed every single day. I mean, the work he's done on uh, Venezuela, for example, he goes down there. All the while, CNN is saying, there's no toothpaste in the supermarket. There's no washing powder. There's no shampoo people are eating their pets and then max goes into a grocery store and says well there's a lot of stuff here a lot of varieties here different prices and all that i mean what he did was it was tongue-in-cheek but it was very factual at the same time i mean what they were saying on the mainstream networks was completely false okay and he has the audacity to show them up and they don't like that and the mainstream media that one of the reasons why these journalists don't say, say anything is they don't like the competition because Gray Zone, RT, uh, Crosstalk, we're getting more and more eyeballs and they don't like it. Go ahead, Ray. Well, that's the big danger that they perceive, you know. They have to control this sort of thing. And if, if it takes intimidation, if it takes trying to kill a John Terry Kiriakou, as it happened two years ago when they did a, a you know, a very usual sort of traffic thing to trap him in his Vespa. Uh, that's what it takes for them. Now, uh, it, we had uh, the head of the CIA, uh, Bill Casey, almost 40 years ago saying, quote, we know when our disinformation campaign is complete, when everything the American people believe is false, period, end quote. How do I know that? Barbara Honecker, a friend of mine, was there when he said it. She immediately uh, reported to the press. So if you want the American people to be obedient and know only what the mainstream media wants you to hear, then Max Blumenthal and Aaron Maté and a lot of these young guys and Ben Norton who are, yep. who are standing up for this thing and, and saying not only the truth about Venezuela but about Syria and, of course, a very important point, Max Blumenthal wrote that book about Goliath and what it's really like in Israel, and that put him in the doghouse with all, yep. with all the mainstream media people who, let's face it, are unduly influenced by people who can't distinguish between the objectives and the interests of Israel on the one hand and of the United States on the other.
You know, you know Garland, I, I, Ray mentioned all these uh, important points that the Gray Zone and Max and Ben and Aaron have been working on here. Um, but these are, th these are third rails because not only, f there's an interesting confluence here. You have mainstream media that is angry that this, the real reporting is being done by real journalists here. And then you have policymakers that are being shown up for what they're doing uh, all around the world. And what they, 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 the mainstream media, and let's use the, the, the term deep state or the intelligence community, they live off of each other, and that's why they do not like people like us or Max. Go ahead, Garland. Well, the other thing is, that let's look at what happened here a couple weeks ago with um, Hillary Clinton, you know, attacking Tulsi Gabbard for basically being a Russian asset um, over her, you know, anti-interventionist positions. There's a, there's a you know, a, a frightening and kind of insidious underlying uh, movement going on uh, with, the, with, the, with, with the elitists to b basically go after people who are challenging any of the tropes that they're putting forward. And I think a, a big part of it is to, to, to have a chilling effect on others right yep. now. You know, I do a show every morning here in Washington, D.C. It's three hours. It's a, ra it's, a, it's, a, it's a radio show on Sputnik. I've had friends of mine tell me, oh, I like to listen to your show, but I'm afraid to call in because I work for, I'm a government employee. We're in D.C., a lot of government employees. I'm afraid to call in because I don't want to get in trouble. Or I'll call in, but I'm going to use a fake name because I work for the, work for the government. So this, the, the sad part of it is this chilling effect that they're intending is working, and I think it's a very dangerous time. Not not just in the United States, but in in the West, where this is this is starting to permeate throughout our entire society. Well, you, you know, Garland, I wanted to tell you is it's, it's very interesting. I've been told by a number of people uh, that uh, uh, people that work for the U.S. State Department aren't allowed to watch RT. I don't know what that means. Uh, they can't watch it at work or they can't watch it at home. Uh, but they've been told, you know, not to watch RT um, and because um, uh, we, we we tend to t uh, target them. Which I know, I, I'm so, you're right, Ray. Okay, I mean, you know, I'll make sure you keep the parameters of information very confined. You know. Everything has to be controlled, okay? That's what they want. Do not let any sunshine in because that will, that will destroy their narrative. Okay, I'm going to jump in here. We're going to go to a short break. And after that short break, we'll continue our discussion on speech freedom. Stay with RT. Most people think to stand out in this business, you need to be the first one on top of the story or the person with the loudest voice or the biggest ratings. In truth, to stand out in the news business, you just need to ask the right questions and demand the right answers. Question more. If these banks, like a JP Morgan or a Deutsche Bank, are unable to settle trades because they don't have the cash to settle the trade, then when the end of the quarter comes, they're going to have to, by law, if, they, if there is the rule of law anymore, and that's an open question, announce that they are insolvent. And therefore, they're going to set off a cascade and a contagion uh, that will be a continuation of the 2008 crisis, but much, much worse. During the Great Depression, which I'm old enough to remember, there was, and most of my family were unemployed working class, uh, there wasn't, uh, it was bad, you know, much worse subjectively than today, but there was an expectation that things were going to get better. Uh, there was a real sense of hopefulness. There isn't today. Today's America was shaped by the ten principles of concentration of wealth and power, reduced democracy, attack solidarity, engineer elections, manufacture consent, and other principles, according to Noam Chomsky. One set of rules for the rich, the opposite set of rules for the poor. That's what happens when you put power into the hands of a narrow sector of wealth, which will is dedicated to increasing power for itself, just as you'd expect. One of the most influential intellectuals of our time speaks about the modern civilization of America.
Welcome back to Crosstalk, where all things are considered. I'm Peter Lavelle. To remind you, we're discussing speech freedom. Okay, let's go back to Dan in, in Pittsburgh here. I find it really truly amazing, but not surprising, is that um, the, the mainstream media will overlook one of its own, Max Blumenthal. Um, actually, they're not even in the same group. The Max is in a different group uh, entirely, uh, a, a real journalist. Uh, but, you know, they, all of this um, um, uh, uh, talk about this uh, whistleblower, you know, and you have to, uh, we have to protect whistleblowers, you know, this one with the Ukraine and all of that. Well, he's just a leaker, okay? Um, but there's more concern for someone that, in, that is damaging um, uh, uh, the political process, undermining um, uh, a duly elected president, irrespective if you like Trump or not, this kind of behavior is, it is, uh, it, it is what it is. It's treason here. But uh, they'll, be, they'll, they'll be wanting to protect the rights of this person here, but they don't even speak up for someone that is doing a truly good job in journalism like Max Blumenthal. All of the priorities are wrong here. Go ahead, Dan. Yes, well, in fact, I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head. I mean, the reason they don't like Max Blumenthal is, frankly, he's a real journalist. He's exposing very serious flaws uh, that the American people need to see. As you mentioned, he's exposing the third rail in American politics, and that is the cruelty that's being visited upon the Palestinian people, for example. Um, in the case of the so-called whistleblower uh, that, that the mainstream press is fawning all over, uh, that individual, um, you know, leaked information that is ready for prime time because it continues to push this narrative uh, of Trump as uh, some kind of uh, stooge of Moscow and as someone uh, who is uh, bad on foreign policy because he wants to get out of wars. Um, so that individual is applauded, while someone like uh, Max Blumenthal, who exposes things that undermine U.S. foreign policy and undermine U.S. intervention, uh, he is vilified or just simply ignored, and that's what's happening here. They won't even give uh, him the light of day to mention that he was arrested and uh, treated in this way. You know, Ray, what's so nefarious about all of this is, uh, uh, and I'm glad Dan brought up this point uh, about um, uh, the, the ruling class, the political elites, uh, uh, always pushing a war and conflict here. Th this is what's really sad. You have a bipartisan consensus that intervention is a good thing and it must, ne it must never end. The wars must never end. The troops must never come home. There's always another monster to be slayed out in the world. They continue this narrative here. And then when you have a, a small number of very, very smart and articulate individuals that use uh, social media, they use these platforms to really push back, you have, this, you have this bipartisan consensus and you have their lackeys in the media that don't perpetuate this narrative. And that's why they will never talk about what happened to Max Blumenthal and probably the violation of his civil rights. Ray. Well, Tulsi Gabbard is saying no more regime change wars. Now, that's a certain, that has a certain resonance among Americans. Yep. They don't want regime change wars. Who defends her? Max Blumenthal, you know? He shows how Hillary Clinton has sort of gone off the, gone off the deep end, okay? So that's one charge against him. I think stepping back here, uh, you have to go back to the old Bible here, King Balthazar from uh, Babylon, who, who saw the handwriting on the wall, right? Well, the handwriting on the wall in this case is meant to show people like Blumenthal and those who would leak to him, important fact there, uh, that the handwriting's on the wall, we're going to get you. We're going to get Blumenthal first, then we'll get you, okay? And so here is Max and Aaron Maté and Ben Norton uh, performing basically what uh, Julian Assange yep. used to do and, and Bradley Manning or Chelsea Manning. Uh, and people will go to him now unless he's shut down. Now, the interesting thing will be to see uh, what, how the courts act to this because yeah. the courts seem to be the last resource here. They have uh, thrown big, big cold water on Russiagate. Uh, courts uh, have been saying, look, you can't indict a guy for something that didn't happen. Max is on to that. So is Aaron Mate. This is what they're really afraid of, to, to, that the American people will realize, hey, this was you, you were misinformed in the classic sense that Bill Casey bragged about 
uh, in February of, of 1981. You know, Garland, you, you know, you and I are in the same line of business. You do radio, I do television. Um, what is your sense of why these journalists do not react to this? What, why have they abandoned their profession? What, what is it for them? Is it just um, uh, celebrity? Is it money? Is it vanity? Is it um, uh, trying to score points? I mean, what is it? I mean, I, I've, I, I've met a number of Western journalists over the years privately, one on one, and they don't like hard questions at all. They said, well, you know how it is, Peter. No, I always say, what, no, tell me how it is, okay? Because I don't understand what you guys are doing. <laughs> Particularly, you all repeat the same talking points. Do you guys get the same memo every morning? morning I don't get a memo from anybody okay I mean from your perspective as a journalist I mean how do how do you explain their behavior and why are they the antithesis of Max Blumenthal go ahead Garland well, see, here's the difference. Max Blumenthal is, is an investigative journalist in that he's searching to find the answer. These are people who, in my opinion, are searching to move up in their, um, you know, field of employment, basically. So they're, we're looking at people who, you know, they see the third rails and they see what happens to people like uh, 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 Tulsi Gabbard or, or, you know, in the instance of journalism, Max Blumenthal, and the message is clear to them. If you want to move up, if you want to get that 10 or $12 million a year, you got to be like Rachel Maddow, and you got to scream Russia and Putin ten times, a, you know, a, 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 every every five minutes. And if you want to lose your job and go to jail, you, you're like Max Blumenthal. So the message is being sent to these people, and it's clear this is about uh, the change. What, what I call, you know, what I consider a total change in American media, where they have pretty much they don't have to like get an email or a fax anymore from the CIA. They just put the people that write the emails and the faxes. They hire them and put them on TV. So my position is what we're calling media now is something totally different. We even need a different name for it. It's, yeah. We're looking at public relations operations for big corporations, yeah. for the yeah. military industrial complex, yeah. and for the, for the <laughs> government. And it's time we start calling them out for what they are. You know, Dan, I, I guess I'm kind of going to date myself with my question for you here. But, you know, when I was growing up, it was liberals were always uh, suspicious of power, suspicious of the CIA, suspicious of the FBI, suspicious of law enforcement in general. Now they're all in bed with each other. You, you know, you see this, you know, see you, you Clapper and Brennan on TV all the time, McCabe. I mean, you know, there's a, this is such a sick marriage in hell. They're just one now. One is an extension of the other now. And that is why, I mean, I'm a conservative, okay? And, and Max Blumenthal and his guys, are, they're progressive to the left, okay? But they get this one right. They get this right. And that's what make, angers the, the, this condominium of the media and the intelligence community. Go ahead, Dan. Yeah, well, in a lot of this, we saw really come into focus and really uh, accelerate with this phony Russiagate narrative, yep. you know, uh, which has pushed a lot of liberals in, into thinking, as you said, that the CIA and the FBI is their friend. Well, we know that both of those organizations have oppressed and repressed uh, movements for social change, both in the United States and in other countries, and yet now they're being glorified. And again, this phony Russiagate narrative helped that to happen, and it only could have happened because the media has been so uniform in pushing it and not questioning it. Questioning it. I think we are at a very low point in American journalism, yep. uh, without question. And to go back to your uh, other question, you know, why aren't journalists questioning these things? It's because you're not going to be a journalist for very long if you do question that. You know, Max Blumenthal started his own uh, web page, his own media outlet to get these views out. He's barely eking out a living doing it. And uh, that's because he is telling the truth. He is raising very difficult questions, and he will not be rewarded for that. He will be punished. And journalists learn these sorts of lessons very quickly. And you have to be very brave, and you have to be willing to sacrifice to get the truth out. There's not many journalists like Max who are willing to do that. Yep. Uh, Ray, I saw you nodding your head. Why are you agreeing? Go ahead. Well, all I can say is amen to what Dan just said. Um, but I'd like to add that, uh, you know, this is vicious. Uh, yep. They're playing for keeps. Um, when it comes out, 
uh, from the special prosecutor uh, Durham and from the IG of the Justice Department that Brennan, Clapper, Comey were all lying through their teeth. This could be held to pay if the American people are informed about it. Yep. Now, who's going to inform them about it? Max Blumenthal, Aaron Matei, uh, Ben Norton. Uh, and, and there are enough people now that follow them that they, they're perceived as a danger. And so they're viciously treated. And I've been in that jail in D.C. I know what it's like. Now, they never, well, they did put shackles on me once, but only for about an hour. Uh, almost two days in shackles? I mean, there's no excuse for that. And uh, I, I dearly hope that Max has a good lawyer because the judge should throw this thing out and should penalize the people who did this, the people who authorized it, the people who sent the D.C. police into, into Max's uh, uh, home even to, to, to raid it and, and, and get whatever information they can from that. This is beyond the pale, but that's their plan for keeps and the die is cost. The die is cast. And if these people do their job, Brian, uh, Bryant, or, or Durham, I should say, and uh, Horowitz and DOJ and uh, Bill Barr in, in Department of Justice, if Trump doesn't wimp out like he has in the past, these guys are going to go to jail. Well, we, That's certainly, big. we certainly hope so. I wonder what, I, I think it's, it'll be easy, it's easy for me to imagine them in orange. Last 30 seconds goes to you, Garland. Go ahead. What these people don't understand is their power is in their anonymity, their strength is in people not knowing what they do, but nothing makes a tree grow like pruning it. They're trying to cut people off at the root, and that's going to cause people to push back more and to want to know what they're trying to hide. I think ultimately this comes back to bite them in the butt and that it's going to expand um, in, uh, 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 independent media rather than, rather than make it smaller. Good point there. That's all the time we have, gentlemen. Many thanks to my guests in Raleigh, Washington, and in Pittsburgh. And thanks to our viewers for watching us here at RT. See you next time, and remember, crosstalk rules.